Do you guys remember when Zion Williamson was the most ridiculed player in the NBA? Looked like me and Shaq had a baby. <laughs> there isn't much of a relationship because Zion Williamson doesn't want to be this there. This is a pattern of behavior with Zion that we are seeing again and again. And look, I was his teammate. I can describe him as a detached teammate. But y'all want to know the real? The real is, is that I think it's time for the Pelicans to relocate. to relocate. A year after being mocked on national TV for his weight, Zion is currently averaging 26 points, 7 rebounds, and 5 assists whilst playing the best defense of his career on the best team in the Western Conference. And I'll let Chris Paul's father finish it off. That's the camera right there, right? Zion Williams, MVP. And as far as MVP performances go, Zion has had a lot, and we'll talk about just how good he's been, but his second half performance against the Minnesota Timberwolves was one of the most dominant displays of basketball I have ever seen. If that sounds hyperbolic, I promise you it's not. In 17 minutes, Zion scored 33 points, had 3 assists, 1 steal, and shot 71% whilst only having 1 turnover. But it's the way he closed out the game, which was just unbelievable. With the Pelicans trailing by 5 and 2 minutes remaining, Zion reeled off 13 straight points. 13 straight on 5 of 5 shooting. It started with a 3 point shot. Yeah, JV then set a screen for Zion to get downhill. The T-Wolves tried to force Zion right, because that's what everyone says, right? You just force him right, and it's easy. But he feigned right, spun back the other way, and hit a beautiful spinning floater over the outstretched arms of Gobert. The next possession, another high screen from JV, and watch where Zion takes off. From the free throw line, he takes off, glides through the air, and finger rolls at home. At this point, Zion was absolutely rolling, but he wasn't done, because he then attacked Rudy Gobert again off the dribble, and I'll let Joel and AD take it away for the last play. Zion's performance was so good that it prompted this response from D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, I mean, he just ran through my guy, took the ball. He's playing football, we playing basketball. We can't touch him or guard him, so good for him. And can you really blame D'Lo? Because although he's wrong and just salty because his team got smoked by Zion, he got one thing right. There is nothing you can do to guard him, which is exemplified by his isolation numbers in which Zion is only behind Kyrie, Damar, Harden, Luka and Dame as far as efficiency and volume goes. And it's because of plays like this. Here he is with Tory Craig on an island. Everyone say a quick prayer for Tory. Zion hits him with the double cross, and if I just pause here, Craig is bracing for contact with no clue that Zion is about to spin back outside and finish. There was also this play against Tory Craig, which was very reminiscent of when he sent Rashawn Holmes into a different stratosphere during his second season. These are the weights of those two guys that he sent flying. They might as well be 100 pounds, it makes no difference. I mean, if they're 100 pounds, they'd at least have a chance at getting a charge call, but it's more than just bully ball. Watch this play where Zion hits Clark with one of the nastiest in and out crosses you will ever see from someone that size before getting to the rim. And this is what makes him such a unique player. He doesn't hit you with a million different dribble combinations, but his ability to change direction with a tight handle and with the same quickness as a guard, whilst being 6'6", six 270 pounds defies physics, which leads to an impossible matchup. Because if you put a bigger defender on him, he's crossing them up and going past them. Or, well, he just does this. Blast pass. Go! But if you put a smaller defender on him, they're getting sent into row Z, no pun intended. But amongst all of this, he also doesn't get enough credit for his touch around the rim. I know that sounds crazy for one of the best paint scorers in NBA history already, but a lot of people just say it's because of his size, it's because of his strength. No, the ability he has to make such difficult layups on a consistent basis is pretty jaw-dropping. 
Just how someone can move with such force, but have such delicate touch, whether that be high off the backboard, hitting finger rolls from the free throw line, or reverse layups, a Zion can pretty much do everything. Just to put into perspective how dominant of a scorer he is, over the course of NBA history, three players have averaged at least 25 points per game whilst shooting 60% from the field in a season. Kevin McHale once, in which he finished fourth in MVP voting, Nikola Jokic is doing it this year and is also a top three MVP candidate, and Zion is now on track to do it twice in a row. He's doing this at just 20 and 22 years old respectively. The word generational gets thrown around a little bit loosely nowadays, but Zion is the definition of a generational player, because it's probably a good time to mention that he's not just one of the five best scorers in the NBA, he's also a very good passer. Here he is casually running a big to big pick and roll with Jonas. Gordon and Jokic are both drawn to Zion, so he casually throws a perfect wraparound pass to JV for an easy bucket. Or how about on this play where he gets the ball in the corner, so the wraps immediately double, which Zion breezes out of. And let's just pause here. Look at the five Raptors players on the floor. Not a single one of them is focused on any other Pels player but Zion Williamson, and he takes advantage of it by dishing it to a cutting Jonas. This is without even mentioning his best asset as a passer, which is kicking it to open shooters after he draws a crowd in the paint. Offensively, Zion is such a force that when he's on the floor, he's the difference between the Pels having the best offense in the league or being just league average. But he's not just a part of a great offense. The Pelicans have also been an elite defense, and Zion's improvement is a big reason for that. It was only a month ago when people were writing articles about how Zion is one of the worst defenders in the league and how he's an absolute liability, which I thought was overblown because how many star young players have been bad defensively? Damn near all of them. But nonetheless, Zion heard the noise and has since turned into a positive defender for the Pels. If you don't believe me, here he is against Jordan Clarkson in the clutch. He got the switch onto Zion, and Zion then mirrored him move for move before blocking his shot. But it gets better, because he then switched onto Kelly Olynyk and was too strong to be bullied in the post before forcing a very tough fadeaway miss. But what has been the real difference in Zion's defense recently has been his willingness to make a play. We saw it late against the T-Wolves, but Zion is now trusting his instincts more frequently to help over and make a steal or make a block before running out in transition. He also did this earlier in the season against the Raptors when he closed them out in a similar fashion. However, I'm not done talking about his scoring just yet, because I want to make it very clear how insane he is as a scorer. This is a graph of every player to average 25 points per game over their career and their field goal percentage whilst doing it. There's MJ, Malone, Wilt, LeBron is in that cluster, and then on the complete other side, in a world of his own, Zion Williamson, who has a career average of 25 points per game on 60% shooting. You know how I said that's only been done a couple of times in a season? That's his career average. We've never seen this volume and efficiency before, but I guess we've never seen anyone like Zion Williamson. And for all those people who are calling him fat, congratulations, because he's an MVP candidate now, and that's really all I've got to say. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, drop a like, subscribe to the channel for more. Have a great day.